Hi students, so in this particular video, I will be giving a glance or an overview of the chapter motion one dimension. So before I go to the chapter proper, I would like to say that this chapter is so, so important of the chapter. Why? Because this chapter is considered as a soul or foundation of the mechanics chapters. So what are mechanics chapters? Motion one dimension, motion two dimension, your loss of motion, what system of particles, work energy power, finally gravitation. So these six chapters together is called as mechanics chapters and out of these chapters, this particular chapter is considered as the foundation of the entire mechanics chapters. So for you people to understand or do complete questions of the entire area, to cover the entire area of the upcoming chapters, you have to be very very much thorough with this particular chapter. And if you are looking for the previous NITA question paper, you will be able to see that they are emphasizing more and more from the mechanics part. They are asking a lot of questions from the mechanics part. So this chapter is that important of the chapter. So the beauty of this chapter is that it's so so simple and trust me on that, trust me on that particular thing. It's so simple and so interesting. And in this particular video, as I told you before, I will give I will be giving you what you should actually focus on this chapter. What are the areas that a need student should focus on? So basically, what does motion one dimension mean? It simply means that only one dimension or one coordinate is changing with respect to time. In this particular video, look at this here. What is happening? A car or a bike is actually moving in a straight line, which means only one of the coordinate is changing with time. Only the X coordinate is changing with time, right? The Y coordinate and the Z coordinate and the Z coordinate or the Z coordinate, the Y coordinate or the Z coordinate is not changing. Just what is changing, Baba? Only the X coordinate is changing. Let's see. Let's see. This car is going to go. This car is going to go. This coordinate is going to go. This coordinate is going to go. This coordinate is going to go. Immortal coordinate Maranilla. So motion is said to be one dimensional motion when only one dimension or one coordinate change with respect to time. That means the rest two coordinates are constant. I we are having three coordinates, right? X, Y, Z. So motion one dimension only x is changing y and z are constant or only y is changing x and z are constant or only z is changing x and y are constant so such a motion is called as what motion one dimension you must be pretty what thorough with that concept now the areas that you should actually emphasize on the things that you should actually look for what are the things that you should actually look for so this chapter i would like to divide this particular chapter into five entities if you're thorough with these five entities you're done with this chapter and the first thing is definitions. So what are the basic definitions? You have to know, you have been studying, you know, since your what, secondary education, what is, uh, what is distance, what is displacement, what is velocity, speed, acceleration, uniform motion, uniform acceleration, what are the relationship between all these entities? You, have, you might have studied distance is greater than or equal to displacement. Like what's your having many what relations? Simple theory part, okay? Just study that as it is. Okay, that's the first part definition because the, you know, that's a, look the uh, thing about the neat papers. There will be lot of easy questions. There will be lot lot of easy questions, simple questions. So they might ask simple definition etc. So it is better for you people to understand by heart or no understand the concept of each and every definition. Simple part. The second part is actually what the average speed or velocity part. Okay, you might have studied. Average speed, a car moves from distance from A point to B point if the velocity is V1 in first S distance and velocity V2 in the next S distance, what is the average velocity? So you're having what ready made equations for that. So what don't just by heart those what you know ready made equation. You just go for the concept, understand the concept, and to make that easier, you just you know. Uh, by heart that equations okay so you have to understand the concept right? so in this particular what average speed or velocity thing you are actually having two criteria the distance criteria and the time criteria which is pretty simple that's a mathematical part it's damn simple okay and the third part which is more simple which is actually the graphs so we are having three graphs you are having xt graph you are having vt graph you are having at graph and you are you know different condition uniform motion what rest uniform acceleration you are having what particular you know graphs for that understand that and the most you know area they ask from graph is that which graphs are not possible no but seeing the graph itself you people will be able to understand what is wrong with those graphs so for understand that particular graph, you my you should be sure with what are the actual normal graphs so that's also basically a theory part and finally the soul of this chapter 
എന്താ പറയുക ആത്മാവ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ ഈ പാഠത്തിൻ്റെ മൊത്തത്തിൽ ഉൾക്കൊള്ളുന്ന ആവാഹിച്ചെടുക്കുന്ന ഒരു ചെറിയൊരു ഏരിയ ആണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വലിയൊരു ഏരിയ ആണ് ഇക്വേഷൻസ് ഓഫ് മോഷൻ ദിസ് ഇസ് ദി വേൾഡ് ദ ഫൗണ്ടേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദി എൻ്റയർ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി വേൾഡ് ദി ഇക്വേഷൻസ് ഓഫ് മോഷൻ യു നോ ദ ത്രീ ഇക്വേഷൻസ് ഓഫ് മോഷൻ equations of motion which is v is equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half s at square and v square is equal to u square plus 2 as so these three equations their derivation where and where you have to apply this equation you know such wise and finally the free fall actually free fall is actually in uh, what modification or is actually an extension from what the equations of motion so that's pretty much about the chapter now people or the students frequently frequently ask us sir i know all these things i know v is equal to u plus at i know s is equal to ut plus half at square i know v square is equal to u square plus 2s but sir i don't know how to apply this equation the questions now frequently people ask us or students ask us sir okka namakku ara sir but ee equation evade edende nu arilla sir endha ina cheyyum so the thing that you have to know is that you people do know how to apply this equation you people have been applying this equation in your day to day life trust me on that so you might be thinking what is this guy telling i i don't know how to apply so i will be giving a classic example so in your day to day life you have been crossing a road so like you are having enormous example i will be giving you just one example look at here you are having a daughter and her father they are actually crossing the road and while crossing the road actually the father is actually actually father is actually looking whether a car is coming or not so why is actually why is he actually looking at the car because for him to safely cross the road you have to cross the road before the car reaches him right le namaku road nalla samadhanathode allengi oru parikkum koodade road cross cheyanamengil ee car ende adutte ethunadinu munbayittu njan cross cheythu kariyanam allengil njan edukkunna time my time for crossing should be less than the time taken by the car to reach this particular point right i will i would repeat that once again for me to safely cross the road my time t taken for crossing the road should be less than the time taken by this car to reach this particular point right so what are we actually doing what our what is our subconscious mind actually calculating our subconscious mind knows the approximate u of the car approximate acceleration of the car my car my subconscious mind or your subconscious mind while crossing the road is actually calculating s is equal to ut plus half at square for that particular car and s is equal to ut plus half at at square for myself and while crossing the road my t and this t i am comparing and my subconscious mind is pretty sure that my t is less and this cost is greater so that i can cross the road look our subconscious mind is actually calculating this word you know complex mathematical equation trust me on that you have been calculating that we thought you knowing that so as far as a need students concern you have to just convert that calculation from the subconscious mind to the conscious mind and how can you do that you can do that by simply doing a lot 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 number of questions and once you have done that particular thing this chapter is yours so pretty plus uh, you, you might be confused with this particular concept just hear it once again you will be pretty much thorough with that so for the further explanations of the for the entire lecture please do visit dopa app and you will be so happy to see how we have beautifully explained the chapter thank you mm-hmm.